Roche's theorem states that if we have two functions f and g, which are both analytic inside and on a simple curve c, and if the absolute value of g always is smaller than the absolute value of f on this curve, then we know that the functions f and f plus g will have the same number of zeros inside of c. And before we continue, I would just like you to know that this video will only cover the proof. So if you're out looking for some practical problems, I have another video just for that. So we're going to use two other theorems to be able to prove this one. The first one is the argument principle theorem, which states that the number of zeros plus the number of poles for a mephomorphic function is equal to this integral. And the second theorem we're going to use is Cauchy's integral theorem, which states that an analytic function integrating over a simple closed curve, c, is always equal to zero. And if we go back to the argument principle theorem, I would like you to know that n stands for the number of zeros, and p stands for the number of poles for a function. But if f is an analytic function, which is not equal to zero on the curve c, we know that the number of poles must be zero. So we can rewrite the whole expression as following. And now we can use the theorems to define some variables. Let n1 be the number of zeros for a function f plus g. And let n2 be the number of zeros for the function f. This is just from the argument principle theorem. But we also have to check that f plus g and f are both analytic functions which are not equal to zero on the curve to be able to use the theorem in the first place. So let's start by doing that. We already know that f and g are both analytic on c, which implies that f plus g must be analytic on c. We also know that f cannot be equal to zero on the curve c, since one condition for the theorem was that the absolute value of g must be smaller than the absolute value of f on the curve. And this can't be true, if f is equal to zero on some point on the curve. And with this new knowledge, we can also say that f plus g cannot be equal to zero on the curve, because that would only be true if f was equal to minus g. And that cannot be true, since the absolute value of f cannot be equal to the absolute value of g. And it is therefore okay for us to use the argument principle theorem in this case. Let us also define a new function f, which is equal to g divided by f. So now we have all the necessary tools to prove this theorem. And what we want to prove is that the two functions have the same number of zeros inside this closed curve c. And it is therefore enough to show that the difference between these two numbers are equal to zero. So if I just use the variables we defined above, we get the following expression. And now we can use that g is equal to capital F times f, and that g prime is equal to the following by the chain rule. To rewrite the whole expression as following. The next step is to try to organize the first integral a bit. If we factor out f prime from a numerator and f from a denumerator, we get the following. And by splitting this integral up into its two terms and simplifying it a bit since we have 1 plus capital F in the denumerator and numerator, We can see that this integral right here is the same integral we have here on the right, just with opposite signs, so they eliminate each other, which means that we only have one integral left, which can be simplified by removing the f from the denominator and numerator. And we now want to show that this last integral is equal to zero, and we can do that by showing that the function inside the integral is analytic on the curve c, because that would imply that the whole integral is equal to zero by Cauchy's integral theorem. 
So we want to show that 1 plus capital F, which is equal to 1 plus G divided by F, is not equal to 0 on the curve C. This could only be true if G divided by F was equal to minus 1. But that would imply that the absolute value of G would be equal to the absolute value of F, which as we said before, cannot be true, since the absolute value of G must always be smaller than the absolute value of F. So, the function capital F prime divided by 1 plus capital F is analytic on the curve C. Okay, that was just awesome. So now we know that it's analytic, and it's an integration over a simple closed curve C. So, by the Cauchy's integral theorem, we know that the integral is going to be equal to zero, which means that n1 minus n2 is equal to zero. And therefore, we can draw the conclusion that, wait for it, n1 is equal to n2. So we have managed to prove that the functions f and f plus g have the same number of zeros inside of c. So now we have actually managed to prove a theorem, which means that I have to make a black box here, but since I have a black background, I will have to make a white box. I hope you manage, and thanks for watching.